Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Angela Brennan and today I'm bringing you a video on the Spellbinders Small Die of the Month October 2024 Festive Friends. This is a really cute set that is good for the festive season which is Christmas and winter and what I've done here is I've die cut all of the pieces from the die set in white cardstock except for the Christmas lights that I've die cut the string or the wire with dark green cardstock. I apply colour to the die cuts with Distress inks, Alto New Crisp Dye inks, as well as some of them with Copic markers. Initially, when I start with this die set, I'm still learning how to put them together. So it's a lot of the guidance is shown on the packaging when you get your die set. So do put your dies together and then when you start thinking of the colours, it's easier to compile them or assemble them or even think of the colours. As I've said many times, the hardest part sometimes with these dies, well-designed dies, is thinking of the colour scheme. Initially here, I start off with a penguin because I know the colours of the penguin. It's really black, white and yellow and then you need the colour of the scarf. I like this penguin so much, I end up making quite a few of them with different colours of hats and scarves. So this is the best part of the die set for me. I really like this little cute penguin and I use it in many cards as you'll see in the rest of the videos that I create for the Spellbinders Club Kits of October 2024. For most die sets, once you start putting the components together, you get the hang of it and you'll understand how they all sit together and as you progress with the second card, third card, you get more creative with the colours and how you put together the dies because they're quite versatile. I really hope you find this video tutorial on how to assemble the component parts of the small die of the month for Spellbinders October 2024 Club Kit useful. I'll show you how I put each character, each part of the die set together separately and then I also show you how I bring it all together and assemble a card. You don't have to use all components to make a card. You can, and I do show you how I do that, but you also can use parts of it. For example, this little penguin can be the main focus of the card. This penguin, I show you how it shows a direction this way, but I also show you later in the video where I do a mirror image of the penguin. So just hang on and see. So you get two different views of the penguin, one with the arm swaying this way and one with the arm swaying the other way, which is the mirror image. There are a few components required when you die cut your dies, all of it in white cut and then you want to ink it. Having a good sticky mat, and I'm using the stamp wheel which has got a good sticky mat, but there's so many other sticky mats in the market which if you have, use those. Failing which you can also use your gel plate that kind of holds on to the small dies quite well as well. So get a surface where you can use Put the dies onto a sticky mat so it doesn't move when you're applying ink on it. So for example there, I used the Copic marker. I used the press and seal so it holds on to the die cut when I'm colouring it. Just having these little things help. Obviously having the right size of blending brushes. Sometimes you want to apply a bit of shadow, you need a smaller blending brush. If it's a larger surface, you want a larger blending brush. And if it's in between, you need a smaller blending brush. It really depends. These are all the components you need to be able to apply ink to the various die cuts of different sizes so you can get the results that you want to. This is what I do because if you've seen my videos, you do see I do like to get them all into white die cuts and then color them. So, But the, the large die of the month, this month, I must say, I do use a lot of my patterned paper and colored paper just for a change because they seem to be a bit neglected. So I do show you a combination of how you can do different ways of compiling your die cuts, different ways of getting colored components onto your die cuts. So I hope that's helpful. I really hope you find this video tutorials helpful. If you do and you enjoy it, do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press that notification bell so you're alerted when new videos are uploaded. I do lots of Spellbinders video club kits, so do check it out. And once I complete all the Spellbinders club kits videos for the month, I put them all into a playlist so it's easier to access them. I know some of us are so busy that you only get to your Spellbinders club kits the month after. 
because you haven't really had a chance. Life gets in the way. I do understand that. So I think it's helpful to have all of the tutorials and hopefully videos of inspiration in one playlist so it's easier to access. And also the good thing about the Spellbinders Club Kids is they do it in a theme. So you will see many, many of my cards not just in this video, but in all the other videos for this month and even all the Spellbinders Club Kits videos that I do, I do use the different Club Kits to create the one card because they all work so well. They complement each of the Club Kits so well together that I can't help myself. For this little lights that I'm going to be putting on the string of lights, I color them with Copic markers. And in order to color them, I leave them where they are after die cutting so it's easier to color them when they're still stuck to the card where I die cut them. Put them onto the press and seal which is a sticky plastic that really helpful when I'm doing some crafting. It's actually meant to be used in the kitchen to wrap food like it's a little bit like cling film in the UK but you know this is something that's really helpful for crafting so it's used for crafting as well. So you can use certain components in multiple different ways to get your better value for money. Later on in another video, I show how I die cut them with the same string of lights with glitter, a glitter card. So it's quite versatile. You don't have to use this colorful approach that I've taken. You can use a glitter, you can use metallic card, you can put some glossy accents onto your lights. You can keep all the all the light colors the same. Actually, when I think about it, I'm not sure why I didn't put all the colors the same. My Christmas tree usually you've got all white lights against my tree. So you could do all the same colors as well. So it really depends on the color combination of the card that you're putting together. Another good couple of products that you need when you do Spellbinders Club Kits, especially the dyes, is having a good picker tool. As you see, this Crystal Katana Mixed Media Picker Tool I have it's valuable. It's so valuable in having that available to do, to pick up all the little die cuts and having a good liquid glue with a fine nozzle tip to stick them together. As you can see, I got a little bit carried away with all the little penguins. And this is the embossing folder of the month. It's called Checkered Argyle. I decided to try a little bit of an embossing folder technique by applying some crisp dye ink onto the flat side and I put it through the embossing folder I think three times. I do not use this background for the first card I do. I do use it for a subsequent card. I decide it's a little bit too bright for the characters that I have die cut but you'll see me use it for another card but I just wanted to show you this technique which is why I kept it in. After I put it through that embossing folder I use a darker ink to just apply or swipe in gently onto the raised flat bits of the embossed panel. I do like how it's turned out. It does give that. You could put a different color. It doesn't have to be the same hues. I could have put a blue, for example. So you can put different colors. Because I didn't, I use it generally as a background, I didn't want it to, to be too busy. So I might do a video where I just show you embossing folder techniques where I use a variety of different colors and keep the card really simple. Because if your background is quite busy, you want your focus with the background and keep your sentiment and other components really simple. If not, it gets a little bit too busy. Per usual, I do emboss a card panel that's bigger than the card base, so it's easier to put it in the card front, attach it, and just cut the excess off. And now it's a matter of just assembling all the die cuts that I've already created onto the card to create the card front. I like to do all my die cuts at the same time in saying that because per usual I end up making many cards so I do do a lots of die cuts. So after putting that orange background, I think it's too bright, I do a grey background of that checkered argyle embossed panel and I start assembling the card. When I first do the first card, I always take inspiration of the assembly that's shown on the packaging and then I try to get more creative because sometimes if you don't then you get a little bit overwhelmed. I do anyway. So I try to get inspiration from the packaging and then by the time I do my second, third, fourth, sometimes even fifth and sixth card, I'm really having a lot more inspiration. So sometimes it's just it's to get you started and then you can just go for it. I do 
enjoy putting these die cuts together and it's great for a winter season it's great for christmas it's great for birthdays during that season it's kind of hard doing birthday cards during that season you can keep it neutral but i like to do a wintry theme birthday cards so that's perfect for this set as you can see here having a fine tips nozzle for your liquid glue allows you to apply the glue quite precisely onto the smaller die cuts and here now i get a chance to choose which colored penguin i get to put and that's why it's great to have quite a few different penguins available or different colors of die cuts so it gives you a little bit of a choice i decide to pop the penguin up with some foam squares so it's got a little bit of an elevation and it and it shows it i think it just pops on the card quite prettily and i end up ha loving the penguin pop so that's how it's used in the packaging and that's how i start doing that for my sentiment here I'm taking a foiled sentinel that I've done previously with the better press of the month. And I also use the bon monthly bonus item of the sentiment, which is a better press plate as well, inside the card. So you, this is what I mean. All of the components of the various club kits go so well together. And I love better press plates because you can use it for foiling as well. This Oh Joyful Day designer papers from Rosie Studio patterned paper. I decide to use that to cover the die cut for my second card. I do use this particular patterned paper set a lot for the large die of the month, uh, which I'll be posting in a couple of days. So do check that out as well because I think it goes really the theme of the die so beautifully. So this is how I'm assembling the body of the bear. You can use colored card, you can use patterned paper, you can even just use ink on it or Copic markers or any kind of markers. This is why I choose to do it for the second card. And I just got carried away and did a whole load. From this, you'll probably realize how many cards. I think I end up making six cards at least. And as I'm doing it, are some of the colors I am doing additional. Here, I'm going to show you how I die cut all of the dies for the penguin but I'm going to do a mirror image of the penguin. So it's easy enough to do. It's not really difficult, but it just takes a little bit of imagination to get a different direct, the penguin facing a different direction. So as you can see there, I've already got one in the light blue, the penguin at the bottom that I've already done. So I'm just going to show you how I have done that. Hi, I like trying to push the dice or whatever products I have to the limits to see whether I can get more from it. All of the products I've used, I've listed in the description below, but do try to use what you already have in your stash. All you need is the Spellbinders Club Kits. All of the inks, the papers, all of that. See what you have in your stash and use that. You'll feel so good with it, especially with all these tiny die cuts. Use all your scraps up and you'll really find value. So do observe how some of the components i put a mirror image some of it i've just changed the direction and how i've used that particular die cut yet i do end up creating a penguin that's facing the other way including the hat as well i think it's kind of cute so do try to see when you get die cuts whether you can get it in a different direction and you can do that with your stamps as well mirror image stamping and that's something maybe I'll show you in one of my videos as well. So you do get more from your products. And I love doing that. I've got so many products. But if I can get an additional use of one product, I do like that. I really hope you find this all really useful. I would really love to hear from you. Do put in the comments what you think of my videos. And I don't mind if your feedback is not always good. Even if it's not great, I don't mind because I feel I learn from negative feedback as well. So I'm not going to get too precious about it. So do feel free to leave the feedback as you see fit. So you can see I'm actually using a little bit of my tool, my release tool from Honeybee, I think that is. And I'm just just kind of pushing the paper down a bit because when you die cut it sometimes the back of it it sticks out a little bit so i'm pushing down slightly and then i'm going to put it onto my sticky mat and just give it a little bit of apply a little bit of ink to give it a bit of color and so that i can put place it onto the penguin die cut
These dies are from the large die of the month from September 2024, Picture Perfect Autumn. I use it to do some landscaping. So for the second card, I'm going to use the sentiment from the monthly bonus Better Press Plates and Die set called Fuzzy Feelings. I'm going to, instead of using it as a better press, I'm going to do some hot foiling with these better press plates. I place the better press plate onto the die cut curved landscape because I want it to be directly onto the landscape rather than die cut it. I put some polished brass hot foil. It's just like using a hot foil plate, but this is better press plate. It's the same sandwich, same timing, same hot foil. It's the same thing, but you're just using a better press plate, which you can use letter for letter pressing later on. I use the Gemini full press machine. I heat it up. When it's ready, I put it at 24 seconds and I put it through my die cutting and embossing machine, which is the Gemini Junior. In my experience, using the Gemini foil press and Gemini Junior machines to do hot foiling, I find the polished brass hot foil the most reliable. Almost always I get perfect results whether I'm using a foil plate or a better press plate to do hot foiling, which is why that's my go-to. Some of the others, the timing differs slightly. I'm not sure why, but maybe it's the pigment. The slight overfoiling, which is not an issue. I just remove the overfoiling with a soft eraser and you have that perfect foiled sentiment to start putting my card together. For the background, I decide to use the embossing folder of the month, the checkered argyle, and I put a teal colored card through it. I decide to just do a very simple background. I don't want to overtake the die cuts because of something the die cuts, there's quite a few die cuts and it can be quite busy. So I try to keep the background really simple per usual. I always like to damp the card before I put it through the embossing folder and then I'll also let it dry by putting some heavy objects on it so it dries quite straight. So this is the next card I'm going to put together but before that I'm just putting a mountain mist, a really light teal color. It looks dark here but when it dries, it dries a lot lighter. As you can see as it dries, it dries, it gets lighter and lighter. So maybe sometimes when you have inks where it dries lighter, let it dry first before you start using it so you know what you're dealing with. By the time I put this card together, I don't really see that much of a darker color on the raised parts of that checkered argyle embossed panel. So maybe I shall wait it a little bit because I'd like it the background to have a slightly slight difference, a bit more of a differentiation between the teal colors. So it does get a lot lighter by the time it's fully dried. Here I'm just trying to see how I put the card together. It, as I said, I do use some dimensional foam tape and I have got two different widths. This I think is two to three millimeters and there's one that I use that is only one millimeter. Sometimes I double up. So this card is definitely not going through the post because it's quite thick. It go, it's quite, it has quite a bit of depth on it. So it really depends what you want to do. If you want to do a card that post, this is not the set to do it. At least not the way I put my cards together. So it really depends. I do like putting some landscape just to give the card a little bit more interest and it really, really handy to slip the penguins in between.
really do like how this card turned out. I do like the color combination as well. Sometimes it's the color combination that really makes the card. And I do like having the sentiment straight onto the card without die cutting it. This is another card I'm doing here, but I'm just using it with the landscapes as well as the penguins. I've made so many penguins, I need to put it onto one card. And this is what I do. I had this vision of this card as I was die cutting the penguins. I just did the same thing. I used the sentiment directly onto one the, the lowest landscape and I decide to go with the penguins. I used a lot of distress inks and did some white ink splatters for the snow landscapes. And there you go. Here are all the cards I've created. As you can see, I hope you get inspiration from all of these cards. I've used a mixture of ink blending, patterned paper, embossing backgrounds. I think I've got an embossed background for almost all the cards except for that with the landscape of penguins. And I've just used some glitter for the stars, some metallic paper, some inked stars. I do like the penguins. I've got the penguins on every single card. So that tells you something. And you see the subsequent Spellbinders Club Kids videos, you'll see penguins again. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press that notification bell so you're alerted when new videos are uploaded. Here are close-up pictures of all the cards I've created. All the products I've used are listed in the description below for your ease of reference. Enjoy your Spellbinders Club Kits when you get it. Happy crafting and I'll catch you at my next video. Do take care.